It is going to be a powerful day today. Let's pray. Jesus, <laughs> Ooh, we love you. This is your house, and we are your people. 
We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to have your will and your way. We are so honored and overwhelmed with thanksgiving that we get to be with you today. We love you. Be glorified, Jesus. Amen.
is your faithfulness I will rest in your promises my confidence is your faithfulness I will rest yeah
open the scroll, open the scroll. Break, break the seal, worthy wine. Open the scroll, break the seal, worthy wine. Open the scroll.
Yeah, just sing that a couple more times. I was made for loving you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus. Yeah, he says he sees your patient endurance, but I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Repent. Come back to your first love. Jesus, take the first place. Take your place, Lord the only one worthy. Yeah, whenever I was in prayer this morning, I, I saw a girl, I don't see her here, which is probably better that way, but um, I just think there's, there's a, a fresh revelation of the Father's love and what the definition of love actually is, that the world is, is lying that what the world says is love, what your father told you was love is, is not what we mean when we say the father's love. He has a fresh picture of what his perfect love looks like for you. Lord, thank you that you are perfect. Thank you that your love never fails. Thank you that it never leaves us. God, we are so thankful that although we are unworthy, that you have chosen us. For such a time as this, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name, amen. Give it up for, we got the squad up here today. You can't really even tell how tall Porter is next to that giant LED wall. Um, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody had a great week. Um, of doing the announcements this morning. It's been pretty short and sweet, but man, I've got one that I'm super excited about, and it's to announce that starting on September 20th, so not that's next week, I think, right? September 20th, whenever that is. Uh, we start up Ascend Youth. Yeah. So... Super expectant uh, for this. I don't personally have an ax to grind here because I don't have any kids that fall into the, the 12 to 18 range. But man, I, I really 
feel strongly. I, I got a word for like this generation is going to be the ones that, you know, from Isaiah 40 that, you know, lower the, the hills and mountains and pull up the valleys and make the ways straight for the Lord. Um, and I just really, I, we see it, you know, I see it in the, in the Benjamin's kids and just, you know, everywhere that, you know, kids that are coming in that maybe from Jump Street started, you know, kind of riding off of their, their parents' faith. Um, but, you know, we all know that you can only warm yourself by somebody else's fire for so long that eventually you're going to have to have that own fire burning inside of you for it to, to really mean something and, and be something. And I, I see it happening across our church and our community of these kids that, you know, they're not riding on their, their parents' faith anymore. They're starting their own personal relationship with the Lord. And it's so powerful because when they've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, there is nothing that the world has to offer that will stand a chance. Um, I mean, my eight-year-old son, Trip is already kind of leaning that way, but you, you can't really tell him much of anything. You try and tell him that the world's ways are better and he'll look at you like you're crazy because he, he's, seen, he's seen the ways of the Lord and he sees that true life uh, true happiness, true love, that that's where it resides. And so you try and give them all this counterfeit stuff and, and they see through it, you know, plain as day. So um, I'm super expectant for the youth. I think it's going to be super, super powerful just from the jump. Um, we've got Priscilla and Jackson are going to be heading that up along with a lot of other people. But man, if y'all don't, if y'all don't know Priscilla and Jackson, uh, they kind of like to you know, hide out sometimes, but that's just kind of the way they like it. They'd, they would prefer for you not to be seeing them, just as, that you see Jesus. Uh, they just want to see Jesus be glorified. So uh, special, special people. Um, so I would encourage you. It is open to the public. Um, so I will, you know, throw this little caveat in there. If you're just in church, you're not in the community. I mean, you're just in the, you're not in the Ascend Academy community. You're just in the church. And you want your kids to be in it, you're welcome to bring them. You would just have to drop them off and then come and pick them back up. I will tell you that the chances of your lives and uh, houses and so on and so forth getting completely wrecked, flips upside down is highly probable. So if you're ready to have your, your entire life changed, uh, because Jesus will most likely invade your house through your children at that point, um, which would be awesome to see. So, um, yeah, so that's going to be every Wednesday night um, starting on September 20th. And I think that's it. I was going to ask if anybody has any questions, but I don't think that would work. So <laughs> if you got questions, then direct that to somebody afterwards. Um <laughs> Uh, and then we're just going to do a quick tithe and offering. I, I won't beat a dead horse on this. I, I feel like I talk about it every time, but I just want to reemphasize one more time in case you haven't heard me say it before. Uh, you reap what you sow. Um, this is good soil. Uh, this, is, this is the Lord's soil that you're tying into. So I just encourage you uh, to give. Um, be a cheerful giver. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And obviously, if you know, you're, you're thinking about lack or abundance, that kind of thing. Don't store up abundance on earth where, you know, moth and rust can destroy, uh, store it up in heaven. And then if you're, you're in lack, then, you know, he's the, the God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So, um, you're better off to invest into him than anything else of this world. So, uh, we're going to play a quick video and we'll be right back.
Come on, praise Jesus. We, um, we announced the Ascend Youth the other night in class, and Shereen was like, I'm 18. <laughs> You're talking about, I'm going to you. Um, but we're really expectant for, so I'm, I think I'm going to go more line upon line this morning, if that's okay with you guys. So maybe sitting in the stool, a little Bible study. Hopefully, hopefully you all brought your word. Um, but anyway, 12 to 18, um, Wednesday nights, I think Tommy hit all that, 6 to 8, and I think it's going to be so epic, really rich. Um, so yeah, my man Jackson, yeah, he's right over here, but he's leading it, and Priscilla's co-leading. It's going to be lethal in the Holy Spirit. I'm just telling you, um, uh, Jackson sent me already, was it, yeah, it was the other day, because um, many of you know that attend our school, we have like a handbook and certain things. It's really just all Bible. It's kind of a, you know, solidified way to just emphasize infrastructure, things like this in a school setting and church. We have pillars. We call them kind of the church pillars. You can go back on YouTube. I think it's two separate videos. Okay. Yeah. Like 12 pillars or something like that. And really would just help you in life, no matter where you are, what you're doing. They're just Bible. So our handbook, though, just to even get in school is pretty rigorous. It's pretty tight, you know. Um, we're just really trying to go after the Lord and be like him is all it is. And so Jackson sent me his for the youth. And look, man, it ain't going to be pizza parties and compromise. I can tell you that. If you think your youth's going to come up in here, he's got that narrow path set. Uh, it will be pizza parties, but it'll be pizza parties and holiness unto the Lord. So really expecting in us. So, yep. Many of you know, like Tommy said, I'm so grateful for Jackson and Priscilla. They're cream of the crop. They're two people I can certainly say I would tell my children, follow them as they follow Christ. I've seen them for years, watched them. Jackson's a close compadre with my son uh, Judah. They run tight together, known him for years. and um, Such a man of character, deep in the secret place of the word. And Our main theme is to know him. It's what you really, when you walk through those gates in the end, you want to know him. You don't want to have a rap sheet of what all you've done for him. You want to know him. And that looks like many things, um, but so grateful. And then Priscilla, she's like, everybody knows Mother Teresa 2.0. <laughs> Filled with heaven, so deep in the word, a woman of character. And, and you have that balance, you know, too. So some of the young ladies struggling with things, they can go to the mother. Some of the young men can go to a father. And so, so beautiful. Excited for that expectant. It's going to be good. Um... And let's jump in. I think that was it. Yeah, that starts, it's like a couple of Wednesdays from now, 12 to 18. And that'll be good. Okay, Isaiah 30. And uh, we're going to kind of dig in if that's okay. It'll, it'll be good. That won't be long. I, do I say that and then I go long a lot? <laughs> this man of God lies behind the pulpit. I'm teasing. Um, oh, Bianca, give me a hug. You, you're back. Were you in Finland? So good seeing you. You know, I met your mom, lovely mother. Yeah, a few weeks back. She's incredible. I guess was she dog sitting, maybe. Yeah, they're watching the poochies. And, um, your, your mother's incredible. We've been so honored to have her. And um, So wait, Finland, were you over there the whole time? Mostly? Really? Wow, was it the, um, was the sun up the whole time? Was it that season or that's another? Okay. Yes, yeah, so everybody knows Bianca. She's an OG around here, alumni. So thankful for her. But she was saying Finland, she told us one time, it, well, come tell them. Do you mind how the sun is crazy? <laughs> Just a little, we'll have a quick little learning study on Finland and their chocolates out of this world. I don't know if you could expound on that a little, the chocolate, why it's so good. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in Finland, it's like one of the Scandinavian countries. So in the summer, um, the sun barely goes down at all. So depending on like what part of the country that you're in, if you're up north, it just does not go down. It just sky turns pink. So it's pretty epic. Um, and in the winter, it's like the exact opposite. So it's like pitch black. Um, in the north all day, and then where we're from in the south, it's dark from like 3.30 p.m. until like 9 a.m. So you better eat your vitamins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see from the sun. Can you see the northern lights up there? Come on. Anyway, Finland study for the morning. Give it up for Bianca. Hey, the, the, the light all day, though. You know what? That's in. I didn't even connect the dots. That's wild. I just, we did that. It's in Isaiah 30, what we're doing this morning. That's so cool. Uh, it just dawned on me. Anyway, but light all day, that could be pretty epic. Long work day. 
I like that. How many of you know we need to work? Go cut some firewood down, do something. Break a sweat. Uh, me and Cooley were talking the other day, uh, Michael, and he was saying, um, I didn't know this, but apparently, this, I didn't mean to go here either, but this new generation, if we're not careful, you know, you got a bunch of like gamers and they're just inside all day. And that, that ain't real, really Bible. <laughs> I mean, do your games if they're holy. But, oh wait, I wasn't, is it feeling heavy? I'm trying to, okay, I wasn't trying to. But it's good to have a solid work ethic. You know, just get out and do stuff uh, unto the Lord. I love that Jesus and the Apostle Paul, he was a tent maker, planting churches, but he still worked. And, and that's really good. Okay, Isaiah 30, this is going to be really good. Um, verses 18 through 25. And I'll pray. We'll kind of see how far we get verse by verse. Um. Really feeling wind on this, excited. So, Lord, uh, be glorified, I pray, uh, through your word. May your word go forth and, and have the fruit do your glory. Lord, heal bodies, renew minds, and make us more like Jesus, I pray. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. So, um, you know, Isaiah, one of the baddest prophets in the Old Testament, a lot of people don't know this, but he was the one that I think Hebrews talks about was sawed in half. That you have martyred him. He was the one, you know. And <laughs> but uh, you know what I I like. I think you can prove biblically to this because there there has been and will be martyrs up until the end. Um, we need to be willing to die for our faith. Like really love Jesus. To, they, the Bible says, I love this in Revelation. They love not their lives unto death. It's when eternity becomes so real. In his value systems, in his kingdom, you just let go of everything down here. You hold it very loosely. But um, I love that you can see it with Stephen, my man Stephen. Um, they were throwing rocks at him in the book of Acts, stoning him unto death, we know. And uh, he sees the Lord. He's in an encounter as he's given his life up for the gospel. And so I kind of believe not to candy coat it. I'm sure there'll be some costly things, but you hear of old martyrs that were burned at the stake and they're worshiping through the flames and the people were blown away. At, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the book of Daniel the other day. They're walking around with Jesus and, what's up, man? Good seeing you again. Where you been? Been busy? Good seeing you. Um, they're walking around in the fire and they're like, who's the, I could have sworn we threw three in. And that fourth one looks a little bit glorified. And so um, I think it's healthy for us to know just good word. And, um, but I do think there's possibilities. I don't know that it's always this way. But in that transition crossover, that it's, you know, you, you begin to see the Lord in his glory. So Stephen seeing the Lord standing. Jesus is always seated. He, he, he ascended and sat at the right hand of the Father, but when Stephen was being martyred for the gospel, the Bible says the Lord stood up. He said, that's gonna cost you. That'll cost you, the enemy. And, um, but st can you imagine, the, and the, you know, studies show these aren't these little like pebbles, they're not like, eh, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to take you out, they're throwing boulders. And he's in an encounter, seeing the Lord. Um, it's so beautiful. So Isaiah, though, he gave up his life in such a powerful way for God, but here he is bringing the word of the Lord that I, I love so, so dearly. And we'll start in verse 18. And basically, before we go there, I want to talk to you this morning about the um, bread of adversity that God feeds. He'll feed you loaves of adversity at times. It's his goodness. And then the more we yield unto him, he'll start to feed you the bread of increase. And where we're all trying to go is to the bread of increase. And this is verse 23, kind of like it prophetically for the year of 23. But the bread of adversity is in verse 20. And there's a correction that comes that we so need by our loving Father. He, he disciplines those he loves. How many of you know when the Father stops disciplining you, that's a, a really scary place because you're no longer a child. But his children, he loves them and disciplines them. But in that disciplined state, often he'll feed. I love, again, this passage because the enemy's nowhere in it. You can't blame spiritual warfare, attack. No, the Lord is delegating. He's sending angels with loaves of bread called adversity to oppose you. And then when we yield, 
He gives out these glorious loaves of bread, the manna of his son, his presence, called bread of increase. And they begin to touch air, every area of your life. You begin to increase only because you love him and it's for his glory. So just want to talk to you briefly about it this morning. It's so good. I'm praying I yield into it better. Um, okay, verse 18. I'm in New King James, uh, but yours should read similar. It says, therefore, the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted. This is really powerful. Um, first off, the Lord can't be gracious to you until you, you're humbled. How many of you know you can't forgive where there's no repentance? Forgiveness can only be extended when there's repentance. A lot of people are like, well, just forgive. Glad to, as soon as they'll repent. Love rejoices with truth. And truth is in the middle of repentance and forgiveness colliding. Grace is in the middle of humility meeting. So God gives grace to the humble, but he'll resist and give up the bread of adversity to the proud. Isn't that awesome? So, but he's exalted when he's, able, he's enabled to give grace unto you. I just love the part on our end. We, we've got to humble ourselves. Keep reading that he may have mercy on you, for the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. And so I love to just sum up verse 18 because it starts off and says, therefore the Lord will wait for those who will wait for him. That's how it ends. So the Lord, just know this, he, he's waiting for those that will truly wait for him. Um, and, and back up, this is powerful. If you back up to verse 1, we're not going to really, st but just to build on to 18, watch what the company we're talking about here. Verse 1 of chapter 30. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, who take counsel, but not of me, and who devise plans, but not of my spirit. So see, this is who he's talking to. The, God's, the Lord is basically waiting now. He's waiting for those that will wait for him. And when you have time, read up to verse 18, maybe later this evening. It's really powerful. But it basically shows a company that have started to rely upon their own plans and they stopped taking counsel from God, stopped inquiring upon the Lord. They started taking in images that fulfilled their comforts over God. Nowadays, it looks like things that just take our attention more than God. Uh, modern day idols and carved images are things that, you know, of course, nobody really worships idols. I mean, in here, or do you? <laughs> but it's not really common in current day. Um, but it's that which captivates your heart more than the Lord. It could be hours on social media a day and one hour with God. Well, social media is your image. That's what the Bible says. It could be your dog. You spend more time thinking about it and the food for it and its new little coat and petting it and whatever. And I get it. We, you know, we, we, we love animals and stuff. I'm just me. It could be your child. It could be your career. So many things, and they creep in so subtly. But our attention's more on it than God, and this is who he's talking to. And he's always at the place of love, just know. He's always, he's such a loving father. Always his plan A is bread of increase. He, plan B is the bread of adversity. But he'll use it only to get us back into the place of bread of increase. So he's never, that's never his first go-to. He's like, man, why are we doing it this way? But how do you know, we as humans, we tend to always push those buttons. I have a million times. And then, and I want to uncover it to let some of us know, like, oh my gosh, this must be what, this might be um, what's happening in this season. Because a lot of times we'll think, oh, it's the enemy. It's resistance. There's just delay. It's not God's timing. And, and sometimes straight from heaven, a big loaf of adversity is just being fed to you. Until you'll finally come back to yieldedness, make him number one really return to our first love, obey, and we'll see here in a second, throw away everything that's distracting and taking our attention over him. And sometimes it looks like, whoa, it's, it, this costs me. This has been such a huge part of my life, these relationships, whatever it may be. But God's trying to take us higher. Can you guys feel that nowadays? He's, he's not doing the plateau thing right now. It's going more narrow unto a wedding. And when you're about to get married, you're not still on other dates. You cut everything off. You, up to the point we have a veil on. 
I don't even want to see anybody else. I don't want them to see me. I'm not trying to get all dolled up because I, I, I want to look pure and clean for the one and only. That's where this thing's going. The momentum of heaven is on it. And you can see it all throughout scripture. So Isaiah 30 is beautiful. So just to kind of give us a backdrop, 1 through 17 is, um, Alex, hey, I, th I thought that was you. I don't want to put you on the spot, but in school the other night, such an honor to have you, by the way, but I've always seen you with your hair pulled back. And so the other night I was like, have you been here before? Of course you have. Anyway, I see you always with Stephen. So sorry about that, but such an honor to have you. You guys know I'm always, I'm all over the place. Sorry, I just see people in. But verses 1 through 17 are beautiful because they're building to where I'm really going to camp out on the grace of God and getting us to the bread of increase. And it's often not a timing issue at all. It's a yielded issue. He, usually God's waiting on us. We're not waiting on him. He's ready to go fifth gear, glory to glory, bread of increase, blessing. But he needs a, a vessel pure enough to pour his wine in. I saw Jesus pick six purification vessels to turn water into wine. It's all a sign. He cares more about the vessel before he's going to, you know, he's not going to put increase on a messed up vessel. He's going he's gonna to resist, 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 ah, increase. So here we are to verse um, 18 in this whole thing. It's really good. We just don't have time. Well, let's even go to verse 9 and 10. This is powerful. It just gives you little windows of who we're talking to. And it's often us, if we'll admit it. Verse 9 that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children who will not hear the law of the Lord. Listen to this. Who says to the seers, do not see, and to the prophets, do not prophet, prophesy to us right things. Speak to us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Give me the easy. I don't want the costly. I don't want to let go. I want all of my baggage that would only fit on a broad path, but give me the reward of the narrow path. It doesn't work that way. And so um, this is kind of the, the company he's talking to, which is his people. It's you and I. It's not unbelievers. Uh, it's beautiful. So, okay, back to 18. The sum of that verse, I love it. The Lord is waiting for those who will wait for him, those who will turn to him and put him number one again. Um, verse 19, for the people shall dwell in Zion. At Jerusalem you shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you at the sound of your cry. I want to stop there. That's really, we have to cry out. If you read further, it says, when, when he hears it, he'll answer you. If you back up, he'll be gracious to you when at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he'll answer. So we've got to cry out. I love the book of James says, if we draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Often we've got to cry out. You know, when he came to Moses, um, the burning bush, he said, look, I've heard the cries of my people. And sometimes we're stuck in mire or a season where the bread of adversity has been being delegated and we won't cry out. That's, that's, it's a relationship. He sometimes that's simply that, you know, me and Judah were talking the other day about something. And normally in these Daniel fast tons of revelation, it just exponentially increases insight into things. Like even he helps with sound all kind of, he's all over the place doing stuff. But normally in these Daniel fasts, all kind of stuff will start unlocking, seeing things that he didn't know before. And, and he, he was hitting this one wall, and I said, man, don't forget to ask the Holy Spirit. He knows, he knows all that way better than any sound guy on the planet. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so sometimes I just want to encourage you in life to practically um, to remember to ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Can't tell you how many times I've prayed, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom to govern your people. Like Solomon prayed, just give me your wisdom, your insight. So I want to encourage you, ask, because it says then and only then, when you ask is how he can hear and then answer. Um, verse 20, here's the bread of adversity. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, the Lord gives it to you, not the devil, not principalities, not demons, the Lord. Hosea 6, we'll go there in a second. Um, it, it's all riddled throughout the word of God. And I think it's healthy to know that a loving father will do this at times. It's not conditional love. It's unconditional love. That's how it should be. But though it gives you the bread of adversity, listen real quick what adversity is. A narrow, this is the Hebrew, narrow, tight place, closed, 
opposition, and here's some more definitions, adversary, to oppose you. And I love that he said bread because you have to eat. Meaning if he said, I'll put you in the land of adversity, you're like, I'll just move neighborhoods. <laughs> I'll, I'll put some neighbors of adversity and they're going to resist you. I'm going to pick some new neighbors. But the bread, that's the only thing on the menu. You have to eat it. Like meaning you can't get away from it. When the Lord decides to deal out bread of adversity, you're not getting out of it. I hope you hear that. It's very healthy to know. But listen to these are my favorite. Adversity, there's a definition of it. Difficulties. God would never. Oh, yeah. He'll put, he'll put you in difficult situations. Misfortune. No, he's full of grace and mercy and favor. Yeah, we love those verses. But stop fully yielding and leave first love. And I promise you, the number one menu item coming from heaven is the bread of adversity. And all of a sudden, difficulty set in. Misfortune. Hardship. And another thing I want to point out that, that's helpful is sometimes people, and I've done this plenty, we're walking in seasons where we're not fully yielded to the Lord. Still a lot of our will involved. We've kind of veered from first love. We love him, but we're not burning anymore. Oil's half full on our lamp. We've got other interests. We're just busy now. Just busy. Not in blatant sand, but kind of lukewarm. Lukewarm? All you are eating is bread of adversity, I promise you. He will not give a loaf of increase for that. He, he spits it out of his mouth, the Bible says. Jesus can't, he can't do it. And, um, but anyway, this is another kind of misnomer at times. People will be walking and sowing the life of, you know, un, an unyielded life. We've left first love, things like this. And the Bible says in Galatians 6, don't be a fool. God can't be mocked. That which a man sows, you are for sure reap. And so everybody knows with that, that kind of language, sowing and reaping, it's not one day the next. It's, it's a progressive time. When you sow a seed, how many farmers we got in here? Yes, one. Anybody else? See, don't nobody work anymore. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm not a farmer. I'm totally teasing. Um, no, I wish I knew more about it. But all we, we all know, though, a seed planted, it's going to take a minute. Right? So let's plant it. Um, me and Zoe did plant some watermelons. That was, uh, that was kind of a train wreck. They started. We saw them. I saw them with my eyes. I didn't know that you had to put hay under them. Oh, you don't? Okay, I read where you did. Anyway, they started. But, you know, you plant the seed, and you're talking weeks before you even see anything break the ground. And then later it pops up the fruit, right? My point being that often we've been walking in this life and so we're reading the bread of hardship and then we turn one day back to God and we experience one hardship and we're just like, what's going on, God? We want to th You're still reaping all those choices. You need to know that those seasons take a minute to overlap back here. That's very helpful to know. Just stay, all we need to do is stay Bible, stay the course. And if we stay that way, the seed sown this way will only and always be bread of increase. But those hardships, don't think just because we turn this day that Monday, Tuesday is going to be all glory. No, you're still going to reap. I'm just telling you truth. It's just very helpful to know that. So that's a lot of times we're like, what happened, Lord? Hardship. I turn my heart back to you. And then we want to turn on God. He's like, hey, you can do whatever you want. My word's my word. I'm bound to it. And um, it's so good. But difficulties, I think that's helpful and not preached too often, but this shows you in the Bible that God will feed you hardships and difficulties to get us back unto him. And so um, that's verse 20. And the water of affliction, yet your teachers, this is really beautiful. This is where it starts turning, and it's so good. Yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore, but your eyes shall, shall see your teachers. Your ears shall hear a word. And, and this is what I pray hits, hits all of us. Again, I'm always preaching uh, to me. Please know that. But I, I pray it happens by the Spirit this morning because right here in this verse, what happens is your eyes open, your ear, you can hear now. Whereas before they said, don't, don't teach me, don't show me the correct way. Prophesy lies to me. Tell me the smooth things. But right here, you're awakened, and this is where it all starts turning back to the bread of increase. 
which is glorious. Hopefully we'll have time to get here in a second. The reward is beautiful. Why? All the way back to 18, for his glory. He's trying to show you grace so he can be exalted. It's a blessing that we increase in all areas, but it's all for his glory. But um, it says, your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore, meaning you're, you will see them. You won't so easily be able to say, oh, just, I don't hear you, and, and be calloused anymore. He'll pull back that callous by his grace, and you see him now. And you hear the words of correction. And you'll hear a word. All of us love this and know it and quote it, but I, I think I see it a little differently. It's still really good. Verse 21, you, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. You all remember King James, this is the way, walk ye in it. Everybody's heard that quoted. Um, this is that, that verse, whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. So what this really is, how I see it is, is repentance. And this is where it starts, which is simply a heart turned back fully to God. A lot of times when we heard the, hear the word repentance, we think, oh, somebody's in adultery, repent, which you should. But a lot of times it's a heart turned fully back to God, you know, and, and I want to pray here in a second, if there's anybody in here or across the world online watching that you're not fully surrendered to God, we want to make a room for you to pray with you. We're all family here that you give your life fully back to him. Listen, if you, I'm telling you the Holy Spirit, be like, yep, that's what's been happening. I, I know it right now. Somebody's saying, that's what I've been eating. Are you kidding me? The bread of adversity from God. Yeah. And when, when it's coming from God, it will not stop till you yield. You can't rebuke it away. You can do all the prayer walks. You won't call all the intercessors. God's like, you see Jonah, that Raphael. I'm just picking an angel name. Raphael, come see quick. You see Jonah down there? What is he doing? I told him to go to Nineveh. Did, did you hear me? Oh, yeah, you said Nineveh. Thought so. Menu number one, bread of adversity. Bring it to him. Big fish swallows him, takes him. You all know the story. This is God. Devil's nowhere in that story. Raphael, he ascends and descends to do the will of God. Ascends, bread of adversity. Billy, what's he doing again? I love him though. I'm never going to give up on him. He's my child. I'm going to discipline him. My call, if he only knew the increase, he's settling for nonsense over here. And this isn't my plan A, but Raphael... Is that a good angel name? Gamaliel. We'll pick a more exotic one. Gamaliel. Gamaliel. Go to Billy, you know, and just feed him the bread of adversity for this season. And it's going to start getting hard. It's going to be difficulties, hardships. You know, I love that um, the Bible also talks about when we start to sow into our things over God's house. He'll put a hole in your bag. God will. He says, you come home and wonder why all your increase just keeps falling out of the bag like there's a hole in it because you chose your things over God's house. And so I just, love, I'm so thankful and want to learn quicker to go this way. And um, so I want to encourage you. I, I really know that there's people in this season right now, we didn't realize it, but this bread of adversity, look, man, I wasn't born again until I was 20. And um, somehow the Lord did it before I got born again, which is glorious. Everything, I began to get caught. Every turn, I, I fell in ease. It was bad. I was really out there. And, um, but also just the misery of life. Everything became empty. I couldn't, anything I would grab deeper for, I was, em I was more empty still, you know? I'll tell that fun story for the new, new people of my, my man, Alvin. This would be a good world, worldly story that many of you know, know the story. But there's a lot of new people and new people online. So, yeah, I was really out there, and I, I think, too, if anybody's not giving their life to the Lord, we want to welcome you to surrender your life to Jesus, man. Everything apart from him is worthless. So, yeah, I just got born again. So before that, I was really out there, drugs, felonies, you know. I was an angel compared to Todd White. He had 19 felonies, but I was not, not really amazing. So always, when I want to feel better, I just look at his testimony. I wasn't that bad. <laughs> I was in the car with him one time. It was like he was having flashbacks in a good way. And we pull up behind one of those vans. You know, they have the, the screens in them where they pull up, pull, pick the inmates up in them, all this stuff. He says, oh, yeah, those are the ones where they slam on the brakes if they don't, they're frustrated at you. And they'll make your, your head hit in, in, the, in the metal grates because you got your handcuffed. I was like, bro, he knows all the... He's like, oh, yeah, they just slam on the brakes, wham, and you hit the... But anyway, so we were down in this area 
I mean, I might have been saved a, a month. This is the same area where they, my buddy was trying to cast out the demon out of Phil. He said, what is your name? The guy's like, Phil. He thought he was going to say legions, you know. He's like, this guy has a demon. He's like, what's your name? The guy's like, Phil. He's like, no, no, I'm trying to, no, Phil, pipe down. I'm trying to get to the demons. What's your name? Phil. Same area. <laughs> So, but I used to run these streets when I was in the world, you know, and uh, it was, it's really incredible, like buffet for the gospel because it's by a college campus. So you have like your frat boys. I didn't run with that group a whole lot. Uh, the punk rockers, I mean, Mohawks and rock and roll and all that stuff. Um, then the hood, I gravitated. I, I, so I knew my man Alvin, he was a middleman for drugs for us. I'm just being honest with you. So my man Alvin, he'd ride a bike into the hood. It was all undercover and he was the middleman. So I just got born again. I'm thinking this new light I found in Jesus Christ has to be shown. Not a lot of wisdom. I went right back to the area. I'm sure God still uses it for his glory somehow, but, but a lot of zeal, not a whole lot of wisdom. So I got born again in the college group. I'm like, hey, let's all pile in my car. Let's just go share Jesus. And we're down right in that area. I've got all these church kids. They've never been in the world. In my car, should not have taken my car. All the drug dudes knew my car. It was just not, no wisdom. A lot of zeal. I mean, we didn't even witness to the first person. I pull up right to the Circle K on the corner. I see Alvin riding on his bike, coming to my car. I said, oh, great. This is not going to look good. And they're probably thinking, who's this guy? I mean, boldly rolls right up on my window. Brian, what you need? <laughs> I'm like, Alvin. I'm like, bro, like, this isn't good, man. I've got my car full of college group kids, you know. I'm like, uh, Alvin, no, man, I, uh, I got born again, gave my life to Jesus. He's like, oh, you just want some weed then? <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's what he said. I was like, bro. I was like, he don't get it. He doesn't get it. He's like, let's just tone it down and get some weed. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but anyway... So I was so thankful he, he did that to me in a creative way as a loving father because he'll see you over here and he longs, that's always his plan A, to bring you into a yielded place for his glory. And it's what he's always created you for. It's where you're most fulfilled, happy. It seems like a tighter path, but the Bible says that's the narrow path that leads to life. It's the broad path that leads to destruction. The, the deception is the broad path. I can have it my way however I want. My cake can eat it too, but it's always destruction. So you kind of don't, you know, you don't want that anymore. And, um, and so it's so good. But, oh, this is what I was going to get at. So this, listen to this. It says, um, you'll hear a word behind you that says, this is the way, walk in it. Okay? And this is beautiful because it's the most incredible picture of repentance. I think a lot of times, I even have seen it this way before, where somebody will come behind you. Maybe one of y'all, maybe Arno, you might help me. You have an easy role. But I normally see it like you can maybe face this way. I'm, you can get in front of me. Normally I'll see it like this where, you know, the Lord says, you'll hear a voice behind you. Or no, walk ye in it, you know. But if you're in front, that's never a good place. You're leading. You, you need to repent. You're not following God. Because then you're like, you know, you can't see which way I'm telling you to go, can you, Arno? I'm like, you're like, which way? You have to look back like... And so if you read closely, it says you'll hear a word behind you because it's still trying to call them into repentance. And it'll say, walk ye in it, whether you turn to the right or the left. And then, and then I'll do, I'll give you the mic. I'm going to be the one in sin that needs to repent. Okay. Bro, you look sharp. Shave the beard. Uh, so you might get behind me. We'll walk this way because I got to turn left. So I'm leading. This is what happens when we... Don't stop leaning on God. We start letting other interest in. Leave first love. Our yieldedness kind of diminishes, and we kind of start doing our own thing. And this is where the bread of adversity comes to those. And so I'm walking, and then it says whether you turn to the right or the left, if you get off course, it's, well, let's do it this way first. You're the Lord. You're leading me. Go ahead. I'm following you. Yep, yep, yep. And then I turn to the left. I get off course. You can stop. Sorry, I'm messing up the camera. I'm going up this aisle. So sorry. And I'm off doing my own thing. Well, then Arno, representing the Lord, and I've gotten off. You just call my name. This is your part. Super easy. Just Brian. Brian, 
So see, <laughs> hey, we got the South African accent too. God's South African today. So, so I have to, it says when you hear the word behind you, you've got to, tur- you've got to repent. That's all repentance is, is, is turn around, find the way again, and walk ye in it. Are you guys seeing that? And so it, that's what it's basically saying. Look, if you, he's so kind and good. If you're walking and you veer right or left, he's got to come behind me. You want to do it again? For the sake of, yeah, you can just do it for you. Brian. <laughs> Amazing. Give it up for Arno. And, uh, So, so the, simply the picture there is, is when you hear a voice behind you, it's not, it's good, but it means you need to repent because you're, you're leading now. You've, you've gotten off. And so when the, when the, now his glory, your rear guard, that's a different thing, but his, a word behind you from the teachers is like, whoops, turn around. I'm, I veered. And so this is repentance. It's such a beautiful picture. And I, and I pray he's doing it even now by the Holy Spirit saying, yeah, I've been, you know that. I've been calling from behind you. You got off. You went too far right or too far left. And he's so kind, he'll do that. And then keep reading verse 23. Here comes the, um, well, verse 22. You will also defile the, the covering of your images of silver and the ornament of your molded images of gold. You will throw them away as an unclean thing. You will say to them, get away. So there's the repentance, turning back to follow God wholeheartedly. And then there's this passion to tell the things that took your heart to get away. So, so there's these three steps mainly out of this I want to highlight. Cry out. Cry again. If you're in that place, all you have to do is cry and he'll hear you. But then he's going to open your eyes to the teaching again and to hear again clearly where you're not callous and just keep shoving them off in the corner. And then... Uh, repent. He's going to say, look, turn back, get back to the path. And when a voice is behind you, he's saying, turn around. You've gotten, you've gotten ahead. You're leading now. But then what comes next is a deep disdain for the lesser lovers that have taken your attention and you start to remove them. And I'm telling you right now, to many, it will look like legalism. But I, I, the, the hour we're going into, the path's getting super narrow. And the other images the things that are capturing our heart, he's really putting his finger on. They, they worked in the past season, but if you're trying to go, many of us are praying, wanting his perfect will. He's saying, I'm glad I heard your cry. Now I'm behind you saying, turn back. But the next step is we've got to throw him away. It's as an unclean thing. It's pretty wild not to be too blunt, but the King James is straightforward. Uh, King James is not very tactful at times. It actually calls that like a, it says where it says unclean thing in the other versions. It actually calls it like a menstrual rag, like a female product. That's what it tre- treats it as. And so it's beautiful that this this holy desire to love Jesus again so takes preeminence that those things you used to be attracted to and took so much of your time they become a disdain to you. They become unclean to the point where expo- exclamation mark. He says, "Get away." And to get away is not just shelf and keep it in the house somewhere to pull you back in again. It's gone, burned, gone forever. And he's doing that in this season right now. He's calling his bride to start to see things that have captured their heart in past seasons. To so get away to where he's, he's number one again. And then here we go into the bread of increase. Who was waiting for this part? It's like the beautiful French bread. I don't know, what, I don't know a lot about breads, but... Um, Verse 23, then he will give the rain for your seed. Isn't this awesome? Then and only then. First, there's the crying out, the turning, repenting, which is a heart fully back to him. Uh, then the throwing away. If we, if we want the rain to come that produces the bread of increase that he'll feed us, we've got to repent, cry out, repent, and throw away. I'm telling you, some people... Uh, and again, I've been guilty of this plenty. We, we turn our heart, heart fully back to God. We seek him. We run with those that are deep in the Lord, but we don't want to throw away those images. And I love that it says silver and gold, meaning from the bottom to the top. Silver, not as valuable. Gold, you're most valuable, all of them. God, he will have no God before him. He's jealous. He'll go from the very bottom 
to things that sort of have your heart to the very top gold of that which is captivating you right now. It could be a relationship. It could be the desire to be married. Who cares? Love him. I'm telling you, it's all that matters. Wait till that day. This is all that matters. When you love him, uh, so emphatically above all, all that just falls in place. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. All things will be added. I'm so, uh, some, some of our images are our destiny. Some of our gold-plated idols are our calling. We spend so much time, so much prayer after what, what is he going to, when, who, wh where, what, me, me, you know. And he's just waiting. He's saying, okay, your destiny is your idol. But it's, under, it's for you, God. Not, not at that level. Not at that. That's not what he's looking for. He's looking for people that love him and know him. And from that, destiny just happens. And you really don't care. You're like, you got glory? Praise God. I'm mopping the floors for your glory? Praise God. Preach to millions? Praise God. I love you. I really need to know you. That's all I want to step through them gates and do is know you. And I do for you. It's a big, big difference in the spirit. It's a big chasm between the two. And we spend most of our lives in the Christian circles chasing things that just, he's like, that's fine. I got loaves for that. Bread of, it's called the bread of adversity. And then we strive and fight and, and network and leverage and force our way in. We, we create these machines that we have to then keep oiled and running. And he's not even in them. He's just looking for lovers. Like, that's right. It's not by your strength and might. No, it's by my spirit. My sons are those that are led by the Spirit. Romans 8. And so, I just want to encourage you. Sometimes it's that. We're so caught up in, why isn't God using me? Who doesn't? Say, what? And he's like, okay. And he's so patient. He'll just keep feeding you those loaves. Until finally it breaks in you. I'm convinced that's what he was doing in David. He anointed him king long before. He could have taken out Saul. But he knew. He said, David's not the man I need him to be once he finally gets the crown on his head. I'll let Saul chase him, kill all these things out of him, write all the Psalms. You ever thought about that? He was anointed way back here with oil from Samuel. Years past, he's being chased in caves, faking drool like a crazy madman running. We always think, oil hit my head, give me the crown. But he has ways to bring adversity to so bring us to a point to where it, only that which matters matters and then it's bread of increase and those people are dangerous because they don't really care they're just glad he's getting glory this is dangerous for the enemy you find a company that really walks in this lane and then the lord can trust them because there's no ulterior motives they're not about them they're not building their own thing and he's like camelio or whatever his name was <laughs> empty the baskets of the bread of increase on that vessel because also too he's, he gives more than he takes in he doesn't care and I get glory, and he's looking just to marry my son. Big difference. It's so beautiful. And um, so 23, it says, Then and only then will he give the rain for your seed. Once we turn, repent, get away from me, that unclean thing. Uh, then he will give rain for your seed, which you sow the ground and the bread of increase of the earth. There's the bread of increase. How many of you love some bread of adversity? Please, no hands go up. Praise God. How many of us are going over to bread of increase? Yes, Lord. It will be fat and... ...large pastures. This is so easy for the Lord. All he needs is a vessel yielded. That's it. Trust me. I've seen both sides. It's so easy for him. Your cattle will feed in large pastures. That's like cows got so many acres. They're just hoof bumping each other. I'll see, I got this 30 acres, and they're just chowing all day. There's no tight fighting over acreage. <laughs> and then this one is glorious. Watch verse 24. Likewise, the oxen and the young donkeys that work the ground will eat cured fodder. This is crazy. Uh, what this simply is is seasoned grain. Some versions say salted grain, like your donkeys are eating five-star restaurant. 
That has been winnowed, if you read further. It's been sifted and all the, the hulls have been separated for them. How many of you have your, your cats and you feed them the canned food, the fancy stuff? You don't need to raise your hand. Yes, you, you know, it's a five star. Or the dogs, the bullseye, we would just throw whatever in a bowl. He, was, he wasn't picky. But, but I mean, your donkeys are eating seasoned. You ever been to the fancy restaurants that they go cracked pepper? And they, just tell me when, you know. That's how I see it. I mean, your donkeys are eating seasoned grain, whereas normally they have to just forge for themselves and plow through the field and eat up whatever's in front of them. Um, are you, you guys know the ones with the shredded cheese at Italian restaurants? How many of you just let them go forever? The same. <laughs> They're like, tell me when. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. I'm just <laughs> watching it mound up, you know, until I can't see the meal. And then I'm like, that's good. <laughs> no teaser, but those fancy restaurants do that. Um, and we'll land it. So watch this. Um, donkeys are eating five star. I mean, this is the, the land the Lord wants all his people to walk in. But he just needs us to turn back and get those things that have crept in and captivate us more than him. He just wants people to love him. First and great commandment, love him above all, which produces real accurate obedience. Uh, verse 25, there will be on, on every high mountain and on every high hill rivers and streams of water. In the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall, here's Finland, Bianca, verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun. Isn't that awesome? Like light all, all day. And the light of the sun will be sevenfold as the light of seven days. Meaning it's just always a good day. It's always bright and beautiful. There's no gloomy darkness. There's no even overcast day. This is speaking emotionally and spiritually. It's just the lights are on. You guys ever been just so filled with God? It doesn't matter what's going on. It can be the most clouded horrendous, ugliest day, and you're just like, yeah, you're just like, it's the glory. Food tastes better. You look better in the mirror. You don't, you just think you look better. It's kind of a deception, but no, I'm teasing. But everything in the, in the presence of God, is just amazing. And so that's basically what it's essentially saying here is like, man, moon's going to be bright. Sun's bright. It's going to cause all, all the agriculture to grow. It's just life, light, no gloom, no darkness. And then I love how it lands, though, because it still puts us in check. It's good. In the day that the Lord binds up the bruise of his people and heals the stroke of their wound. But watch this. Listen to the New Living Translation right there. Right here, sorry. So it will be when the Lord begins to heal his people and cure the wounds he gave them. Watch ESV. The Lord binds up the broken, brokenness of his people and heals the wounds inflicted by his blow. And now I want to go to Hosea 6 just to, to kind of sew it in. Listen to Hosea 6 1. You don't need to turn there. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he, ha he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he'll bind us up. And so I think it's very healthy to know, like, the Lord often is the one delegating the bread of adversity. He's the one tearing to heal and bind up. And I love that the end of, um, in verse 25 right there, it talks about he'll, he'll heal the wound that he caused. See, a lot of us don't want to do that. We want to bind devils and stuff. And, and I think it's better to know truth. And so it's so good. Um, I pray he would do just a... a there's so many more verses to Hebrews 12, how he disciplines. I love that the Bible says even Jesus learned obedience through what he suffered. And he never knew sin. So you guys go ahead and stand. Uh, the worship team could help me. We'll get ready to pray. But yeah, I want to open the altars actually too here in a second for... Specifically that, like anybody that's trying to shift over from the bread of adversity into the bread of increase. And what that entails is repenting, saying, get away all unclean things, which here is anything that's captivated our heart over him. And, uh, and I pray a, a great shift happens both in the house and across the world online with our family. So, um, yeah, maybe if the prayer team could come help me, it would be awesome. Oh, that'd be awesome. So appreciate it, dude.
appreciate you, man. Yeah, so first off, um, I just want to invite anybody that you might would say, uh, if there's anybody in here that, you know, um, I don't know that I even am living for the Lord. Like I told you guys earlier, I, I was really out there to the age of 20, uh, steeped in sin, and I got born again September, actually this month, 28th, 19, um, was it 98? Yeah, because I was born 78, yep. So 20 years old, I was in college, you know, um, I don't know if you ever heard this story, but I was, I forgot I still had a marker that you could use it, but the back end would pop out. It was a pipe for drugs. It was really bad. This shows how naive I was. I got born again and I, I'm in college. I got born again. I just didn't know. So I was, I want to get a, rid of everything, get away. And I, one of my friends he's like yo going to the club this weekend i said no not for me man i got born again matter of fact here and i gave him my pipe i'm i'm just so dumb i'm like here i'm not doing any drugs anymore you do them you know so dumb so again a lot of zeal not much wisdom man and so so but i was into some deeper stuff so later i'll never forget a week or so later he came back he's like yo what were you smoking out of that thing my lips went numb you know it's just it's like it was not good so i was out there and the lord if he can pull me back to himself so can he in your life and look he'll put you on the path or all things just roses no he'll then begin to teach you how to die to yourself take up your cross and follow him that's what true disciples are made of but he's called you and i want to invite you this morning if you say you know i don't know that i've fully surrendered my life or you may had in prior seasons but you're no longer walking with the lord the bible says the wages of sin is death meaning if you're living in sin and sin is real simple it's anything jesus would not do you know if you're watching anything every week that we can't put on these led walls right now in front of everybody it's sin if you're listening to things that we can't play right here through these line arrays because you'd be embarrassed it's sin it's things jesus wouldn't do um you want to return your life back to him and he'll give you the grace, you know, whatever it may be. So, um, and we'll pray online as well, but if there's anybody in here, we want to welcome you first to pray with you and then the bread as a whole, uh, second, but just raise your hand, please. If that's you in here, you say, look, I want to surrender my life fully back to God and I want prayer. You can just raise your hand wherever you may be. We don't embarrass you. Praise God right here. Anybody else? Awesome, right here, this young man. God's on you, man. I, uh, yep, I saw you earlier in worship. Anybody else? We're, okay, right here, my man. That's awesome. I'm glad I came over. It's so good to see you again. Okay, so three people, um, and we're going to invite you to come forward to pray with you. We're just family. We're not trying to embarrass anybody. I love that the Bible and history tells us clearly that Jesus hung naked on a cross for all public eye to see. Still has holes in his hands to this day. And the Bible says when you confess with your mouth, meaning a public statement, that's, that's when things shift. It's really powerful. I did the same. I was uh, went to what's called the upper room. I said, man, I, I don't even think I knew the lingo to say I need Jesus. Just, uh, you know, and he began to lead me to the Lord and it began there. But let's do this real quick too, because this helps sometimes. I get it. It's, sometimes people are you know, embarrassed in public settings. But if... Um, if you can, and, and don't assume, you never want to assume somebody next to you is for certain born again, whether you know them real, real well or not. If you could just look to your neighbor and say, hey, is, is that you? Because I'll go up there with you when we pray. You can go ahead and ask them now and say, look, do you want to surrender your life fully back to God? And, um, and then when we pray, it, it makes it a lot easier for some. Okay, so th those that um, had your hands raised, what is today? September 10th? Okay, so you'll beat me to it. I was the 28th, but I want to encourage your life will be radically transformed. You look back, say September 10th, 2023. I was going this way and I heard a voice behind me. Say, turn around, walk ye in it. 
There's going to be a supernatural grace come upon you this morning to start walking in that narrow path that leads to life. The bread of adversity is going to start leaving. The bread of increase is going to come. So, yeah, go ahead and come forward. Anybody that raised your hand or you said somebody wants to come with you, you can come with a Ruth. That's awesome. Welcome. You can just line up. We're going to pray for you. So grateful. Give, it, give them a hand as they come, please. Thank you, Lord. What's up, my man? Awesome. Chris, you mind helping me, man? Maybe just lead, lead them to the Lord. Chris, amazing man of God. You all know leader in the house. He's going to lead you to Jesus. Just focus on him. Yeah, Father, we thank you for their yielded hearts. This is their surrendered life, their choice to step forward, God. So just repeat after me. It's not just a prayer. It's a life exchange where he literally gives his life for yours. A brand new life. So just say, Father, forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Today, September 10th, I surrender my life to you. Fill me. Wash me. Make me brand new. From this day forward, everything is brand new. By your blood, by your spirit, I say yes fully to you today. In Jesus' name, I just receive. I'm going to pray just that the spirit would fill you and be brand new from this day forward. In Jesus' name, Father, fill them. In Jesus' name, from this day forward, never the same. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, come brand new. In Jesus' name, fill Michaela, Lord, in Jesus' name, never the same. In Jesus' name, brand new. Lord, that the morning that they would wake up when they leave here, that the sky would be bluer and the grass would be greener. In Jesus' name, brand new revelations. In Jesus' name, fill them, Lord. Bless their decision, Father. Bless their surrender. In Jesus' name, a fresh and filling, Lord, never the same. Bless them in Jesus' name. Thank you for their choice. Thank you for their life, Lord. Brand new in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's give God praise. You can stay up here. You can stay up here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Many of you know this, some of you may not. I want to encourage you just to stay in the Word of God every day, start the Gospel of John. And uh, you never want to leave that every day, even if some days it doesn't feel like it makes as much sense. It's alive. The Word of God's alive. And get deeply rooted in with community. We're here as family, if it, if it works for you. But we just love you. And, and just stay here, because we're going to pray, actually. Anybody else that you just want to shift and kind of surrender afresh this morning and go over to the side of the bread of increase, if you want to come now, we're just me, myself, the prayer team. We're going to kind of mob you. Just to let you know at a time. You guys want to come up, make room, please. Anybody that wants prayer, I just want to believe for a shift to hear the voice of the teacher, the voice behind you, and a fresh turn and shift into a life towards the bread of increase, that a season would shift supernaturally. In the name of the Lord. Awesome. Porter, you can miss you guys' mind as you feel led. Awesome prayer team. Y'all would just, as you feel led, let's just lay hands and believe for that shift. Thank you, Lord. I'm pray online. Everybody watching online, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for a new season this morning. Their eyes would open to see the teachers and their ears would open to hear the voice behind them. Turn. Walk in the correct way. And I pray for a fresh grace to get rid of those things that are unclean, that have had hooks in their heart and diminished first love. And I pray you take them over into the bread of increase that you get glory. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that every time we call on you, you come. It hasn't fallen on deaf ears that we get to gather in this house and we get to experience your presence, Jesus. We get to experience the tangible realness of you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the word that was given today, Lord Jesus. I just pray. lesser lovers, all the other things that, that we meddle in, that we give our time to, and we say, oh, it's okay, the little foxes, the things that we just do, just to do, just to fill a void. Every part of our hearts, Lord, just fill it. Fill every void, Lord, every other thing that we're using, the other things we're using to fill the places that we, you need to fill, Jesus. Just even tonight, Lord, in our bedroom, just for there to be a grace for you to come, for you to come, for the fire of God to come and just fill, fill every one of the people in this place, Jesus. Just fill us afresh, Lord. Let us eat the bread of increase. Let us eat the bread of increase. Do whatever you need to do, Lord, for us to align with your ways, with your will. Break our legs, break our backs. Let us be a spotless bride for you, Jesus, spotless without wrinkle. Prepare us, I pray, Jesus. Let us yearn, let us cry out for you, Jesus, for you to come back. The cry of the bride, to cry for our bridegroom to return, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this day and our daily bread, Jesus. Jesus.